<clears throat> All right, let's give this one a shot. So, whew, ladies and gentlemen, so far a lot of it we've been working with factory, right? And this one's gonna be a little bit different. We have an X here on both of them, um, but I can't really factor. I could factor out a sign, but it's gonna get pretty difficult. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure I'm using the same trig function. So I'm gonna convert these both to sine of X. Okay. Now, I could factor out a sign, but that's going to get pretty difficult because this is one over sign. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm say, well, I'm kind of at a loss here. I don't really, I can't get the one sine x by himself. The only way I can do is see if I can combine these. So to combine them, I got to get the same common denominator, right? So let's try multiplying by, um, ooh, that's horrible. If here, let's get them to have the same denominator, so I'll multiply by sine of x over sine of x, right? So therefore, I get 2 sine of x squared over sine of x plus 1 over sine of x equals 0. Does everybody follow me what I did? Yes. Now they have the same denominator. Now I can combine them. Remember, when we're trying to... We're trying to solve, we need to get one value or we need to have it factored so we can use the zero product property. Well here I can combine them now to two sine of x squared plus one over sine of x equals zero. <clears throat> now this is okay because remember I need to solve for sine of x. So what I'll do is I'll multiply by sine of x to get that off the bottom, right, on both sides. Obviously that equals zero, that's pretty weird, that works good, so I get two sine of x squared plus one equals zero. Now, we just use like we've been doing for other problems, Miranda, I'm just gonna solve for x. So I'm gonna subtract one, and I get two sine of x squared equals negative one, divide by two, and I get sine of x, or sine squared of x equals negative one half. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now the last thing I need to do is take, take the square root, right? So I take the square root. Now that's worked before, but look it. I'm, now I'm taking the square root of a negative number. Can we take the square root of a negative number? No, it's gonna provide us an imaginary solution, right? So that's why we have no solution for this problem. You cannot take the square root of a negative number. Okay, so there's a couple difficulties to this. First, trying to get them combined, all right? So that's why I had to add that. You have to see that um, it's either solve x by itself or use a factoring technique. Here I had to combine them by adding them up. Then the next thing is when you solve, you get a square root of a negative number, which we know is impossible. Or it's going to provide us imaginary solutions. All right? So there you go. Imaginary solutions for 27.